I'm Ali Spears, one of the program coordinators for the Department of Poultry Science. And in this session, we're going to be talking about admissions and scholarship opportunities. So we're going to tell you all about how to get in and how to get some money. So first, I just want to differentiate that there's two ways that you can be admitted to A&M. There's freshman admissions and transfer admissions. We'll talk a little bit more about transfer admissions in a few minutes, but first, let's start with freshmen. So fresh, to be admitted as a freshman, uh, this is gonna be when you're graduating straight from high school, you graduated as a senior, and then you're coming into college without having any time being at actual college um, as far as enrollment goes. So you can still be a freshman and have dual credits and AP credits, um, and that's something we'll touch on in a second, but just kinda wanted to give you a clear line of the difference between the two. So for freshman admissions, you are gonna um, want to get your applications ready to roll here soon. Freshman admissions for the fall 2021 cycle will open on August 1st, and then you'll have all the way until December 1st to get all of your application um, items together and submitted. So for the admissions application for freshmen, uh, there's two ways that you can start your application. There's the Apply Texas or the Coalition. So these are two platforms in which A&M has uploaded their application. So it's gonna be a really easy process to take you through each and every step that you're gonna need to fulfill in order to have a completed application to submit. So along with that application, there are some additional required documents you're gonna need to have as well. So there's gonna be an essay that you can write and then upload. Um, then there's also a $75 processing fee. And then these next two bullets are things that I've changed a little bit, so I do wanna go into a little bit more detail. The first thing is the self-reported academic record. So this is really where you're gonna be putting in kind of all of your uh, high school achievements as far as your academic records. Um, you're gonna be putting in uh, your grades and courses and all of that, just to kind of uh, keep everything in a one area to where it's easily recognizable and can be evaluated against other students. And then the next thing is the change in the ACT and SAT test scores and how all of that is working. So the a and just made an announcement that they will not be using the ACT or t SAT as far as admission uh, requirements or evaluation for the fall 2021 cycle. So if you've already taken it, great, you're good to go. But also if you haven't taken it yet, kind of due to all of the craziness going on in the world right now, don't worry about it. Um, they're not gonna be using it against you um, as far as evaluating if you can be admitted or not. There are some also some optional things that you can include in your application, um, which are some letters of recommendation and then also resumes. So if you are luckily admitted into Texas A&M and hopefully into poultry science, there are some more things that you will need to um, upload and submit just to make sure that everything is good to go and you get the green light as far as applying for a new student conference and getting registered for classes. So the first thing is gonna be a proof of vaccinations. Um, so you'll have to upload or submit a bacterial meningitis report. And then your final high school transcripts to make sure that you did indeed graduate and you're good to go as far as completing high school. And then also if you have any transcripts from any other colleges um, where maybe you might have taken some dual credits at a local junior college, we're gonna wanna know about that as well. So this is kind of where I wanted to talk about the AP credits and dual credits. So we are seeing an increase of freshmen coming in with lots of hours, which is great because you have things done, um, but it also makes things a little bit confusing because sometimes you might be wondering, oh, am I a transfer because I had some credits done or am I a true freshman? Um, like I said earlier, if you are coming straight from high school, you are in fact a freshman, but there are some ways that you could also have courses count um, that you may have already taken in high school. So the first way is AP credits. So the way you can have AP credits count is if you meet a certain score on your test. And then um, as long as that course also has an equivalency at A&M. So let's say you took an English class, for an AP English class, and you got a four on the um, AP exam and it counts. So then when you are admitted, we would go in and make sure that it counts for the correct courses. And then we would manually uh, submit, or excuse me, manually accept that credit. Um, AP and dual are a little bit different in this fact to where AP credits are ones that you have to manually go in and approve and um, claim the credits, where dual credits are gonna be ones that automatically will come on your transcript and um, will automatically count. 
So kind of like I just said, the dual credits will, um, as long as there's a course equivalency, so just meaning a course that matches what you took at A&M, then um, those are automatically applied and you are good to go as far as having those classes count. So the TAMU admission application um, has changed a little bit in the regards to how students are being admitted. So now, there used to be three ways, now there's two ways about how you can be, become a student at A&M. The first is being in the top 10%. So this is um, specifically for students who are applying who live in Texas. So if you're in the top 10% of your class, then you are an automatic admit just like you have been in the past. Where things have changed a little bit is now we only have a review of all of the other applicants. So in this pool of applicants, they're going to take everybody who applies that's not in that top 10% and evaluate you based off of your extracurricular um, uh, activities, your GPA, and all of everything that you've done basically throughout high school, as well as take into account your essays. So this uh, link on here just shows you a little bit more information about all of that if you're wanting, if there's maybe some details that are specific to you and you're wanting more information. Uh, lastly, so I know we talked about the applications being done through Applied Texas and the coalition, but maybe you're thinking, okay, great, once I submit it, how do I know where I'm at? A&M has thought about that, and there is a uh, application tracking system, so it's called AIS, and uh, you can follow, you know, from step one to, the, to being admitted or denied through that process um, on the link provided. So, uh, there's lots of ways that you could, um, or lots of decisions that you could receive that are not necessarily an, uh, uh, being admitted, but yet you're still kind of admitted. It's kind of a, there's lots of different programs that um, you maybe uh, get the option of when you are submitting your application. So there, each year there's over 41,000 students that apply to A&M, which is much, much more than we can accept um, here on campus in College Station. So some of the ways that you could also be admitted, um, not necessarily as a full-time student, um, but ways to still be an Aggie. First would be the Aggie Gateway to Success, which is a summer program um, where you would complete requirements for that before you're eligible to be um, admitted into whatever major or department that you are wanting to be in. The next is the Blend Team program. Um, this is a two-year program where you ha are duly enrolled in both A&M and at the Blend campus uh, here in Bryan, and you take courses at both places and have a minimum GPA requirement that you have to meet before you're able to be um, solely an A&M student. Uh, the Higher Education Center in McAllen is now another option. So they have a campus down in McAllen where they have a similar type of program to where you can uh, fulfill the requirements down there and then um, decide if you want to move up to College Station or kind of what best fits your scenario. And then lastly is the PSA program. Uh, so this is one where you are admitted to basically a sister campus of A&M or one of the A&M system campuses um, to where you will complete certain requirements within the first uh, year or so of your admittance. And then once you complete those requirements, you're then able to uh, transfer to the College Station campus. So now we're gonna talk about transfer admissions. Um, I know in the beginning, uh, this is kind of where things can kind of get a little confusing if you're not super familiar with the word transfer. Um, but basically what a transfer student is, is you're coming from another uh, college, whether that be a four year or a junior college, and you have some form of college enrollment in your history. So the requirements in order to be a transfer student for the Department of Poultry Science, and there are different requirements depending on your department, so this is specifically for us. But you do have to have at least a 2.5 or better GPA. Um, you have to have at least 24 credit hours completed. And then these are some of the courses that we prefer you to have completed. Um, we get a lot of questions on, oh, I don't have chemistry, can I not um, be admitted? And that's not, that's not true, these are just ones that we prefer you have done. It just kind of makes the transition a little bit smoother and allows you to jump right into our coursework uh, once you get here. The last thing I want to mention is um, meeting with a poultry science advisor. We do have that on here. Again, this is something we prefer. If you have your requirements done and you're like, I'm good to go, this is where I want to be, um, great, then you can apply. The only reason we mention this is 
The application for transfer is not done from admissions, it's done on a departmental level. So the review of your application is going to be done in-house in poultry science and if we are able to get to know you and get to know your story a little bit better then we can kind of vouch for you through the application process and um, on the committee to kind of say yes I think this person would be a great fit um, we definitely need them in our department um, also if you are thinking you know you're deciding to go to a junior college for your first year and um, you're kind of a little bit unsure of what to register for Myself and Leslie are more than happy to sit down with you or right now have an email or Zoom call um, to kind of guide you through what you should be registering for if poultry science is your ultimate goal. So these are just the deadlines um, for the transfer admissions. So um, again, the application opens on August 1st and then the deadline is October 15th, which is different from freshmen, so make sure that you note that down. And that is for spring admissions. So if you were wanting to start in the spring, if you're wanting to start in the fall, that application cycle will happen um, in the spring and it'll open up January 1st and close on March 1st. So just again, some important dates to note down if you're thinking about transferring. So next we're gonna talk about the scholarship. So this is where, um, if you haven't been paying attention, you might wanna tune in a little bit because this is how I'm gonna talk to you about getting some money. So um, annually we award over $100,000 in scholarships directly back to the Department of Poultry Science. And those scholarships can range anywhere from $1,000 to $5,000, um, really kind of depending on the year and how competitive our applicant pool is. Um, but the way you become eligible for these scholarships are you're going to send in your application through the continuing uh, student scholarship kind of overall application that is uh, for everybody at the university. And then through that, you will then become eligible for poultry science scholarships and then also all of the College of Ag and um, university scholarships as well. So that's kind of why we've selected this way to um, have our scholarship application go so that you're eligible for not just us but everything um, that you could possibly meet criteria for. So poultry science scholarships, these are the qualifications in order to receive one of those. Um, you have to have at least a 2.5 GPA, and then we like to see you involved in something. And this is kind of where um, our current students, we kind of hound on them a little bit. They're not the best at filling out applications, um, but we kind of just like to be upfront with things because this is how our application rolls and this is the way it's gonna be. Um, so if you're coming in as a new student and you're thinking, hey, I really wanna apply for one of those scholarships, it's great to know this. So when you get there, you can hit the ground running. Um, but involvement in either our department, a club, or something on campus, uh, which there's thousands and thousands of organizations you can be involved in on campus. So um, there's no excuse as far as not being able to find something that you can enjoy. Uh, we also look at the leadership experiences and roles that you've been put in. And then um, also if you're working, that's something that we want to know about. We realize that some students have to put themselves through college and maybe aren't able to be quite as involved because they are working. Um, so tell us that and we will kind of make things way out a little bit um, and even things out in the end. And then the next thing is participation in major show wing banding. So I do not have a poultry background at all. And when I first found out what the heck a wing banding was, I was like, you people are crazy. But basically, if you show um, poultry in the state of Texas, then your bird will have a band on its wing, which is basically just its identification um, to make sure you have the same bird when you go to show. But we have to put, the Department of Poultry Science has to put all of those bands into all those show birds, and we need our students' help to do that. So if you come and participate in a wing banding, then you're gonna get some scholarship points um, back towards your application. Lastly, our scholarships are competitive. Um, our uh, department is growing, which just means that we're getting more students, which is awesome, but these scholarships are getting harder to get. So you wanna um, set yourself apart and make sure that you have as many of these things as possible to make your application competitive. Um, and then also these applications are due um, traditionally every February in, uh, in the spring semester. So also freshmen perk up again. So we kind of uh, have an ongoing joke that as an incoming freshman in poultry science, you get a signing bonus um, for being a student in our department. So um, 
once you are admitted to poultry science and just for being a freshman, you get a little bit of uh, scholarship money to help you out. Um, this usually ranges anywhere from $1,000 to $1,500, kind of depending, um, again, on the ap academic year and uh, applicant pool, but you automatically get one. So just for being a student, you will receive a scholarship. Um, and then at the conclusion of your freshman year, you will have to apply through the continuing student application in order to be continually uh, eligible for those scholarships. So that kind of concludes everything about admissions and scholarships. Um, I hope that you got something out of that. And if you have any questions, be sure to note them down and we can go over them later in a live session.